Alfred Bader first fell in love with art and the idea of collecting art when he was doing his graduate studies. He was studying chemistry, but he took an art history course and he began almost immediately to acquire works of art. So his, his love of art immediately became the act of acquisition. In 1960s, he first gave a work of art to the Agnes Etherington Art Center, and his collection built dramatically over the following decades, as did his commitment to Queen's University. The focus of his research on the School of Rembrandt became key, and he continues to collect today and to enlarge and deepen those holdings to our supreme pleasure and advantage here at Queen's University. The Bader Collection is the largest collection of Dutch paintings in any university museum in Canada, possibly in any museum in Canada. And we are the only museum in Canada that has two Rembrandt paintings. It's a remarkably focused collection with an emphasis on Dutch art of the 17th century, but it also includes other kinds of European art. The collection has had a huge impact, um, especially within class discussions. We've had numerous assignments where we have to do what's called a visual analysis where you don't analyze, you just strictly write down what you see. And while you can do that from an image in a textbook, you don't see as much in as much detail than as you do seeing it in person. So I would remember coming to the Art Centre for hours and hours and staring at one painting, going over every square inch and you can see a lot more detail and see what things have may have been painted over that you can't tell from reproductions. And it's a really intimate experience having that here. A key responsibility of an art teacher is to design curriculum. The Bader Collection, through its uh, finely tuned curation, is a wonderful launching pad because it helps students to look at art as a way of conveying meaning and a way of anchoring an art unit uh, which involves studio production and art history. Healthcare students, like any professional, occupational therapy students will be working and communicating in a huge range of environments. And if the students are only seeing things from their own perspective and failing to recognize that there are a multiplicity of viewpoints out there, that it really will compromise their ability to communicate, advocate, uh, and get things to happen on behalf of the client. So the gallery is ideal for that because they're looking at art and becoming really quickly aware how we all notice different things. Occupational therapy in a sense is both an art and a science and there are certain aspects of occupational therapy where you might be using visual arts or performance arts to actually help people who are having trouble expressing themselves find a new medium for expression. I mean, it was just kind of a neat inspiration and really encouraging to know that that side of learning was also available to us on the Queen's campus.